This guy works at an ice cream shop gets involved with his intriguing and attractive new neighbor while dealing with personal issues. One morning, he dreams of confessing his love to her, but wakes up disappointed when he realizes it was just a dream. Later, his dad talks about his future plans after summer, reminding him of his previous gap year. The dad gives him three weeks to figure things out. At work, he's scolded for being late and asked to close the shop, but he declines because of a date with Diane, which his co-worker doubts. Meanwhile, a mysterious woman appears at the neighbor's house. His co-worker is annoyed about closing because he wouldn't do it and questions his date with Diane. He explains they're friends, but later, gets accused of spying on her. Diane diffuses the situation, and he goes home. He catches a glimpse of the mysterious woman undressing next door, and she catches him watching. At dinner, his dad refuses to buy him a new phone and criticizes him for not standing up to bullies. The doorbell rings, and he panics, thinking it's the neighbor, Victoria, but it's actually Diane. They go for dinner, where she apologizes for his broken phone. He invites a friend over against her wishes, which annoys her. Later, she reveals why she's upset about the friend. All of a sudden, Cameron spots Victoria ominously lurking in the driveway, prompting him to hurry back indoors. Peeking through his curtains, he sees her staring right at him. To his surprise, she's suddenly behind him, and he apologizes profusely for accidentally seeing her undressing. He explains that he usually sees their neighbor, Miss Carpenter, through the window, so Victoria reveals she's house-sitting for a few weeks. When he opens the door for her to leave, she insists he drive her around town as punishment for spying. Cameron explains he can't drive because he hasn't sorted out the car insurance, but she threatens to talk to his parents if he doesn't comply. Reluctantly, he drives her to an office building, where she takes the keys to ensure he doesn't leave. From the car, he witnesses a man opening the door for her. Minutes later, he approaches the building to check on the delay, only to see the man limping towards him, begging for help. Confused and terrified, he rushes back to the car and locks the doors. The injured man leaves bloody handprints on the windows as he pleads for assistance. To Cameron's horror, he watches as Victoria bites the man's neck, killing him. On the way home, Cameron realizes Victoria is a vampire, and she threatens him into becoming her driver. Outside his house, she kisses him and tells him to trust her. The next day, his dad asks about the blood, but Victoria arrives in time to explain it was from an injured deer hitting the car. She offers to pay for the insurance if Cameron drives her around town, which his dad agrees to, much to her satisfaction. Later, Martin confesses to Cameron that he stood Diane up at prom because he's unsure how to act around her, seeking advice on winning her back. That night, while waiting in the car, Cameron witnesses a body falling from a building, shocking him. When Victoria returns, she licks blood off her fingers before they head home, where Cameron cleans the blood from the car windows at a gas station. Hours later, Victoria appears beside him in bed, revealing her true reason for being in town. She discloses she's 247 years old and seeking vengeance on a vampire pack who killed her lover in 1890. She explains that some of them have moved to town, and she's determined to eliminate them all. Relieved that the people she's killed weren't human, Cameron wishes she had told him sooner. The next day, Martin asks Cameron to join him on his date with Diane because he's too nervous. Later, Lenny is shocked to see Cameron with Diane outside the shop. That night, Cameron asks Victoria how many vampires she has left to eliminate in town. Victoria says there's one tonight and another she hasn't found yet. She explains that the elusive vampire was the one who killed her lover, their packmaster, and she vows to make his death agonizing. Despite Victoria's orders to stay in the car, Cameron insists on accompanying her into the building. In the basement, she confronts her target, but when he sees Cameron, he shoots at him, and Cameron pretends to be hit. Victoria easily defeats the target, but admonishes Cameron for the risky move. Before they part ways, he asks her to interrupt Martin and Diane's date tomorrow so he has an excuse to leave, and she agrees. The next day, Liz invites Cameron to watch her friend's band play, but he declines. During the date, Cameron tries to ease the tension by sharing Martin's plans. When he tries to leave, both Martin and Diane beg him to stay. As Diane goes to the restroom, Victoria arrives to pick up Cameron. Outside, she asks about Diane, and Cameron confesses his feelings for her. He explains Martin's role in his plan to make Diane see Martin's flaws. That night, Victoria helps Cameron confront his bullies, and they agree to leave him alone. In the car, Cameron drinks Victoria's blood to heal his injuries. Later, Victoria suggests being intimate to make Diane jealous, but Cameron refuses, realizing he can't betray Diane. He thinks the date went badly, but Victoria disagrees. The next day, Cameron's father gives him a knowing smile during breakfast. Later, Martin confides in Cameron that the date with Diane fell apart after he left, seeking his help. Cameron suggests that maybe it's a sign things aren't meant to be. Meanwhile, Victoria visits the vintage clothing store where Diane works. 
Cameron tells Liz that he's done prioritizing others' happiness over his own and decides to go watch her friend's band play that night. That evening, Hunter gives Cameron condoms after hearing about his exploits. When Cameron sees Diane's car outside Victoria's house, he spies on them and witnesses them kissing. The next day, he confronts Victoria about involving Diane, but she dismisses any chance between them. Victoria insists he still owes her one last night as her driver, intimidating him. Cameron decides to orchestrate another date between Martin and Diane for success. He quits his job at the ice cream shop, faces Liz's anger for standing her up, and learns Martin asked Diane out again. Carol gives Cameron a new phone, asking him to keep it secret from his father. Cameron then guides Martin through a successful date using an earpiece. However, at Lover's Lane, Diane reveals she's a vampire by biting Martin. Shocked, Cameron goes to find Liz but encounters Diane, who shows him Martin, alive and enhanced for baseball. Cameron feels betrayed by Diane's secrecy over the years. Diane admits her love for him but believes their relationship won't work due to her nature. As they kiss, Lenny observes nearby. Later, Victoria tells Cameron she didn't know about Diane's vampire status and chose not to tell him. Victoria reveals to Cameron that Diane, the woman he loves, is the elusive vampire she's been hunting, and he's to be the bait. Sensing danger, Diane rushes to Cameron's house. Suddenly, Lenny confronts Diane, threatening to expose her true nature. Diane subdues him and feeds on his blood. Minutes later, Diane and Martin burst in to rescue Cameron, who Victoria has taken hostage. A fierce battle ensues between the women, culminating in Diane using a wooden tray to fend off Victoria's attack with a blade. Straddling Victoria, Diane reveals the truth about their shared past a century ago. She apologizes, and they share a kiss, reconciling and considering a new start together. As they part ways, Cameron bids farewell to Victoria, expressing gratitude for their vampire hunting adventures. Diane explains to Cameron that it's time for her to move on, despite his reluctance to let her go. After one final kiss, Lenny, now turned into a vampire, asks Cameron to inform Liz that she's the new assistant manager. He then joins the others in the car as they drive off. The next day, Cameron informs his parents of his decision to pursue writing, particularly focusing on vampire-themed stories. Outside the ice cream shop, he apologizes to Liz, attempting to explain the events of the past three weeks, though she remains skeptical. Despite this, Liz accepts his apology and allows him back into the store.